Hello everyone, today we're working on a 2024 GMC Denali Ultimate with the 6.6 .6 Duramax in it. And this truck has about 8,000 miles on it. We're going to be putting a AMSOIL bypass filter system on it. And the filter kit that we'll be using today is a BMK 21. A BMK 21 is a standalone bypass system. It comes with uh, Here's your filter head. Comes with about 12 feet of hose. And it also comes with uh, the hose ends and an assortment of fittings that come with it as well. Uh, another thing that uh, AMSOIL sends along with each one of their kits is a free oil analysis uh, kit. You return this card and they'll send you a free oil sample kit for taking oil analysis. So that kind of shows what comes with the uh, bypass filter BMK21, it does not come with the filters. Okay, So there's three different lengths of filters here. I'm going to show those to you. And I've got this set up underneath the truck so that whichever one of these filters you want to use, you can use. There's an EABP 110. And each of these has the same uh, thread pitch and everything on the uh, filter head. So it's just a matter of which one of these you want to use on that filter head. So this is the longest one, EABP 110. And then there's an EABP 100. And then the shortest one is the EABP 90. And just for reference, I've got uh, a concrete contractor here in Iowa that uh, we've got a bypass system on it. We're on our fifth oil change with this bypass system. And we've been using the short filter. We've been running about 25. The last oil sample we took, we had 27,000 miles on the oil change. We had basically no oil consumption in that 27,000 miles, it was still full. Um, soot was at half of 1%. Uh, the wear metals were excellent shape, performing very well. So if you want to use the shorter filter, this filter is about probably six bucks less than the next size up. And this medium sized filter, again, it's about probably another six or seven dollars to go up to the big one. What I found is that this, this short one, the cheaper it costs less, but it does very well even out to 25, 26, 27,000 mile drain intervals. So you choose what you want to do. Obviously, the bigger one's going to add more oil to the system. So that's something you got to take into consideration too. We're going to be adding probably, I would have, depending on which filter you use, I'd have at least probably three quarts of extra oil uh, when you're putting that bypass system on. Okay, so <clears throat> the other part of the bypass install is the items that I'll be providing in my kit. And what I have is a bracket set up. And what I start with, uh, we've got the PP uh, long filter. And uh, this filter gives you a lot more uh, filter media over the stock filter. And it's a synthetic media filter. And these are the filters I've been using on that uh, Duramax, that 2021 Duramax. And uh, again, we're running in that 25, 26, 27,000 mile range. As I cut them apart, I did a video on, on cutting them apart. That's on my YouTube channel if you want to take a look at it. But it performs very well. Very, very good filter. Uh, they're saying 5 microns. They aren't telling me how efficient 5 microns. That's the only thing I can say about that filter. But uh, according to the wear and the oil analysis, everything's looking great. And then also there's a fuel coolant pump relocation kit. And that's a PPE. And the reason we put that on is uh, GM put the, the fuel coolant pump right behind that filter along the frame. So it limits how much length of a filter you can get in there. Um, this here moves it back about four inches and gives you room for that longer filter. Now, the thing is too, if you don't want to use the uh, PPE filter, you don't have to. You can still use your standard filter. Um, I try to use the best uh, quality of, of synthetic media filter I can use for the full flow. But uh, if you want to still use your standard one with my, my setup here, you sure can. It's not a problem. Uh, another thing, uh, Basically what I'm showing you here, all these items right here are what are going to be in my kit for installing that BMK21. So I wanted to say another thing, if you don't have an Amsoil wholesale account, I'd be happy to set one up for you. It saves you 20% off the retail or online price of all their products and uh, anything over 100 bucks will ship to you for free. And with that uh, uh, preferred customer kit that I'd set you up with, I get a small commission off what you buy so that helps me out as well. But um, so this, this here is basically all of my kit that you would buy direct from me. Um, I wanted to show you, this is a, a filter adapter, it's a Mishimoto. 
and that filter adapter will go between where your original filter was and where this filter here goes on. Okay. So what that does, it's a pass through. You can see it just passes right on through. And it gives us two ports to be able to get pressurized oil to feed that bypass filter. So it makes it a lot easier for installation. On a previous install, what I did is I went into the block, into a port on the block, and it's kind of hard to get at. And it makes the installation quite a bit tougher to do. And uh, with this here Mishimoto uh, sandwich adapter, I, I've got the, the port to take pressurized oil from. So it makes that a lot easier. It'll be part of my kit. And I've got a shield down here because what I'm doing is the oil is returning to the uh, oil pan. And what I do is I remove the drain plug and I put an adapter in. And then there's a T that goes in. And that T then has a cap on it that allows you to drain oil when you need to drain, change oil. And uh, the hose from the bypass, the return oil, feeds back to the crankcase right through that. So this here adapter is also part of my, my kit and uh, all the hardware that you'll need to be able to mount that up, line support bracket, oil sample valve, um, main bracket. And this here is a, a guard that uh, bolts onto the cross member underneath the engine. And that's there to protect your, uh, your valve or your drain valve and, and your adapter where it goes into the oil pan. And that's a 3 plate steel so that, that gives you the protection your, uh, your drain valve will be right down here. And when you go to change the oil, the only downfall that I found with this is that when you drain an oil, the hole in that T when you take that brass cap off is not all that big. And it just takes a little longer for it to drain. But uh, give yourself a little more time. But <clears throat> this here goes on, there's two bolts that go in and there's existing holes already in that cross member. And what we'll do is, is uh, we'll use the, the grade eight bolts 7 16 and those will thread right into those holes in the in the frame in that cross member so what you'll do when you change oil is pull one of those bolts out and you can rotate this down that'll give you access to your your drain valve and all that to drain it out so that's there to protect uh, your valving and all that so that uh, if something comes under here it's not going to hit it so that's all part of my kit and another thing <clears throat> we'll be running in it is the uh, Amsoil signature series diesel oil um, this is what I've been running in that 2021 and been working very well. It's a 5W40 and uh, been working very, very well, even out there at 27,000 mile drain intervals. Um, the only reason I need to change it at 27,000, the base number is getting down to about two. And at that point, they'll flag it and say it's time to change it. Everything else is looking really, really good. Um, another thing, I'm a dealer for gold plug magnetic plugs. And uh, I've got the gold plugs for the, the rear diff, the front diff, and transfer case. Now, <clears throat> the plug for the, like the front diff, um, I've already changed it on this truck. There's no magnet in the plug. Okay, previously, if you go back to like 2019 and before, they'd put a magnet, a gray magnet, on the fill plug. And that gray magnet, um, it's uh, kind of weak. Okay doesn't have a whole lot of power. So this is a direct replacement for it in the gold plug, which I'm a dealer for. And if you buy the kit and stuff from me and you want the gold plugs, just mention it. Uh, these are about 25 bucks a piece. So I want to show you the strength of that gold plug. This is an inch and three quarter wrench here. And you got to remember also uh, on those gearboxes, your front diff, your rear diff, transfer case, the only filter you have in those gearboxes is the magnet. So the stronger that magnet is, the more metal it's going to remove or pull out of the oil to protect your bearings. And that's very important. It extends the life of those bearings significantly. So I'm going to try and pick this wrench up here. Kind of show you the strength of it. There we go. It's a pretty good chunk of steel to pick up. So these magnets, what happens with these gray magnets from the factory, once they get fuzzed over with metal, they don't have enough strength to keep pulling the metal out of the oil. This one will keep pulling no matter what. It'll keep pulling that metal out of the oil. It'll build a beard around it. Okay, so huge difference. And then also on your transfer case, the plugs on the transfer case, they're a 3 8 pipe plug. Okay, they're a tapered pipe thread. And this is both the fill and, and the drain plug on your transfer case. They're both exactly the same size. Okay, they're kind of hard to get out on this uh, 
24 Duramax because there's not a lot of room behind them to get a uh, Allen socket on there to remove it. And again, there's no magnets on either of them. So this is a direct replacement for it. It's a hex. It's got a hex that you can put a wrench on it from the side and it goes in a lot easier. So in this particular one, I put uh, two of these plugs in, one in the fill port and one in the drain. Makes it a lot easier to get them in and out. Okay, and same type of gold plug on the end there, neodymium magnet. Very strong magnets. So I'm a dealer for those. Um, one thing I wanted to show, I've got the uh, differential cover off the rear. Now, if you're putting a Banks cover on your rear diff, those are nice covers. I like them. I put one in this one. Um, if you're going to put the Banks cover on, it's got its own magnets. So Gold Plug does not have plugs for the Banks covers. So I want to show you the rear, the rear cover. i got it sitting over here. I'm going to grab it quick. I can show you they, they glue a magnet inside that rear cover. And uh, this truck, again, has 8,000 miles on it. I'm going to grab that cover here quick. So right here is 8,000 miles, and like I said, we put a Banks cover on. Here's that magnet we're talking about. And the break-in process takes usually around 20,000 miles to get complete on these differentials from brand new. And what you're seeing right here on this magnet, this is that, that break-in metal. Again, that's 8,000 miles worth of break-in metal right there. I mean, there's a lot of it's already done on that rear diff. And on the front diff, they have the same type setup. They have a magnet inside the cover. So the only way you're going to, uh, and again, there's no drain plug in the front diff either, so you have to take the front cover off to do it right. But uh, the front magnet looking about like that, that same type of you know, fine metal. And this is normal, it's just a break-in metal, but you need to get it out of the oil because that metal goes through the bearings over and over again. And once this magnet gets fuzzed over enough, it's not gonna keep pulling, it's not strong enough to. So I just wanted to show you that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started, and uh, we'll be back with you. Copy of the oil analysis, actually the last six oil analysis on the 2021 uh, Duramax that I have bypass filtration on. We've been running the Amsel YW40 Signature Series and uh, standalone bypass along with the PPE deep or uh, PPE uh, longer full flow filter. And uh, this last oil analysis uh, down here, number six, was uh, in January. And we had just shy of 27,000 miles on the oil and filters. Uh, the truck had 131,500 on it. So we started number one uh, oil sample here was uh, with petroleum base oil when we started. And he had about 27,000 miles on the unit. And uh, as we go down here to lube time, you can see um, how many miles we, we run on each oil sample. So number two, we had 18,000. Number three, we had just shy of 17,000. And then it started jumping up here in, uh, in August of last year. We got 25, almost 25,000. And the last one here, almost 27,000. Um, big thing I want to show you is the um, soot. Because soot is something that accumulates in the oil as you run it. And uh, this last sample was the longest one we ran. We were at uh, six tenths of one percent. And uh, on, on the soot, they typically don't start uh, flagging that until you get out to about two to three percent. So here we are, at, you know, almost twenty-seven thousand miles, and we're at a little over half of one percent. And uh, the main reason for changing the oil is right here. The base number is getting low. We're down to around two. Starts out at about 11 on the brand new oil, and this is what neutralizes the acids in the oil. So we're getting down to the point where we had to change it because that's getting low. The other thing is, uh, 27,000 miles. Um, we were still full on the dipstick, and there was no oil made up in that time either. So that's another thing to make note of. Um, wear metals are looking excellent for that many miles. Um, like I say you can look at right there's five different oil analysis from uh, the 540M zone, so the bypass filter, and the PPE full flow filter. And uh, it's performing very, very well. I'm very happy with the results of it. So I wanted to show you this to give you confidence to do, um, you know, what, what this oil and filter system can do for you. And uh, reduces the wear and just extends out those, safely extends out those uh, drain intervals for you. Okay, we're going to assemble this hose. 
And the first thing you'll notice this hose coming from AMS oil, it's cut on an angle, and we don't want that angle. We want it cut square. So what I use, I got a blue point, uh, it's a YA1000A, and uh, it's a hose slicer. So we'll come here and get a nice straight cut on it. Just like that. So that gives you a nice 90 degree cut on it, so you're good to go. Now I've got the impact here, and uh, if you got a drill, that'll work too with an adapter, but it's a 5 8 socket. This is the shell that goes on the outside of that hose, and that shell has reverse threads. So what I do is I put this on, and we have it going, turning as if though you're removing a nut, reverse, reverse threads. Okay. And we're going to the point where it's in there tight. I'm going to turn it back probably about um, maybe a half a turn or so, because I don't want it tight up against the end inside. Okay, so right there is about where I wanted. I went about a half a turn. Now, this is the insert. And unfortunately, the manufacturing practices today, they used to have threads that went all the way up to the bottom of that hex. And you can see right there, let's see if I can get this uh, pointed out. You can see right there at the end of this little Allen wrench, there's no threads right there for about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. Okay? So what I'm going to do is if you put that in all the way, you're going to be down to like one thread holding because you can see how many threads are in the end of that shell. So we're going to put a little bit of oil in there. That will help lube up that angled part where it screws in. And start turning it till it grabs. I'm going to clamp it in the vise and just make it a lot easier. Wrench size is a 9 sixteenths. Go ahead and screw it in. And I don't go all the way. I stop just shy. So basically what I'm doing is I'm leaving about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch between that hex and the shell we put on the hose. You can kind of see it right in there. Got a little bit of a gap right there. That leaves those threads fully engaged in that shell because if you take it down and bottom it out and I've had it before where you've only got one or two threads holding you can actually strip those threads so when you're putting that hose together make sure you don't just sink it down all the way leave yourself about not quite an eighth of an inch there so that gives you the hose end all assembled give you a good shot of it there so that's how you make the hose ends or put them together Okay, we're going to start relocating this fuel coolant pump. And right here, there's a little red tab on the electrical connector that gets pulled back. And then right here, it's real hard to get my fat thumb in there and get that release, but you push that down, it'll pull right off. And you can set that right over top of the frame. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove these two clamps. We're going to drain the coolant out of this uh, pump. And uh, I'm going to catch it. Uh, if you have a clean container, you can save it, reuse it, or else you can put it in new. I don't think we're going to have all that much. It might be a quart, maybe two quarts. And uh, I'll show you later, up, up top, uh, it's up by the master cylinder under the hood, is where we fill the reservoir for this uh, coolant pump. So, what I'm going to use to take off those lines, i got a little channel lock here, and it's a spring clamp. So, I'm going to try and get it backed off. If I can. There she comes. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and get the other hose off, take off these three bolts, and then uh, we'll discard this, uh, this bracket, and I'll show you putting on the new one. So 
we'll uh, we'll get that done. We'll be back. Okay, I got this pump off, and I've assembled the new stainless uh, mount that comes with that PP kit onto it. And what it's doing is shoving that pump back about four inches. So these two lines here are going to have to be replaced, and they come with new lines from PPE that are longer to to reach over here. So I just wanted to show you the angle about where they need to be at when you get them all assembled. Because basically all we're doing is putting that longer hose on and moving, moving the pump back about four inches. We're using the same bolts right here that we did on the original, that original bracket. I'll show you that here quick. Kind of show you what they've done. So in essence, this is what we got. We're moving everything back, like I say, about three, four inches right in that range. Okay. And using the same mount holes. So this is the old one. And uh, so this is going to get bolted up right in this general area. And we're going to take these hoses off next and get the new hoses put on. But I wanted to show the angle where the hoses are so you got some idea. We're just moving everything back about four inches. Okay, that PPE kit comes with four worm gear hose clamps. Now I'm going to reuse the uh, spring clamps because they keep a constant pressure on that uh, on that joint there between the hose and the aluminum. And the reason that's good is because if you live in a place where the temperature swings from 20 or 30 below to 90 above, that's a huge temperature change and these uh, hose clamps can't keep constant pressure through the temperature change. So if I can, I'm going to reuse these, uh, these spring clamps. Um, this end here, it's going to be a little tougher because it's just a little bit bigger. But uh, the end up here on the hose, where it goes on the aluminum, that works pretty well to go ahead and reuse. And right there, I got the two top ones done. Okay, we got those hoses about where they need to be. Okay, so the next thing is to mount up. We're going to mount up the uh, mount up that pump. Okay, I've got the spring clamp off that was on the pump, and uh, it was actually stuck to the hose. There's some rubber adhered to this clamp from when they put it on. So you want to get that off or it's going to interfere with you getting it onto that new hose. So take and, and just scrape it out and get it out of there and check, uh, you know, check the clamps and see because that will interfere and you'll have a hard time getting it on. So just scrape that rubber off and then it's clean and good to go. Okay, I'm going to put a couple bolts in just get them started here so that I can have the pump kind of where I want it. And we'll torque those up later. I think those are going to get about probably 12 foot pounds of torque right in that general area. Okay. Now the pump's going to hang there just fine. Next thing I'm going to work on is getting these uh, clamps on. So I'm going to go on here first, and then I'm going to push that hose on. Okay. And the clamp might fight you a little bit. That's all right. We'll get her. Come on. Okay, there we go. Okay, right there it is. That one's on. And I'm going to get this other clamp here. And we'll do the same thing on that top. The pliers are getting kind of worn. The teeth ain't much there anymore. You have to get a new one one of these days. It wants to slip. That causes me a little bit of grief. Okay. It doesn't hurt to put a little bit of antifreeze inside that hose when you go to put it on. It'll slide on a little easier. I didn't do it on this top one, and I should have. Pull it back off, maybe put a little bit on it. Yeah, that's better.
Now, see if I can get that baby on there. Without too much more trouble. Almost there. Oh, come on. <laughs> I almost need three hands. <laughs> is seated now. See if I can get it over the hump there, that barb. That'll be the next thing. Come on. There it is. Got it. Okay, these two bolts here, I ended up going with about 10 foot-pounds on those. Um, I'm going to do the same on this one. So, um, we've got the clamps all on. We use those original spring clamps. Again, that's your choice. If you want to use the worm gear clamps, go ahead. But uh, the spring clamps will work beautiful on there, too. So what we're doing is uh, this pump gets slid up in, kind of slid right up in, just like this right there. And then this bolt is what holds it in. And they send along in that kit a 10 millimeter or an 8 millimeter. I think it's an 8 millimeter bolt uh, size, 10 millimeter wrench size and that nut will get put on that back side and you reuse that bolt that you took out of the original that long bolt so we'll put that in we're going to torque it and uh, also the other thing is this uh, wire here is hooked on to a clip up there and you have to pull it down a little bit to get enough range of motion on that uh, wire to get plugged back in. There we go. Okay, so you got to free up a little bit to uh, to gain enough to get that plugged in. But it will go. There it is. Okay. We may have to move uh, that harness just a little bit to take the pressure off of it, but uh, that'll work. So we're going to tighten that up, and uh, and after that I'm going to show how how to uh, fill up the the antifreeze for the uh, fuel coolant pump. So that's pretty much it for putting on that relocation kit. Okay, we're going to be putting this adapter in where the drain plug was. This is what comes with the adapter. Maximum torque 25 foot-pounds. We're dealing with brass, so don't get crazy with it. I'm going to do probably about 23, 24 foot, uh, foot-pounds in putting this in. But again, don't over torque it or you strip it out. We've got the crush washer on and I've got the I've got this set to about 240 inch pounds, which is uh, 240 is about 20 foot-pounds. I'm going to take it up just a little bit more. About 275 inch-pounds. That's good right there. I'd say about, I'd stay at uh, about 20 is what I'd stay at. About 20 foot-pounds max is what I'd do on that one, the way that felt. Okay, now this T goes on, we put some pipe dope on that. Okay, we go put that in, and when we tighten that up, you're going to want to put a backup wrench on that brass one, otherwise, you're going to be tightening it up more yet, you'll end up stripping it out. And When I'm done, I want it set just like that with this cap on there. And then the other thing is when you're putting that cap on, I think that's a 9 16 I don't have a 9 16 down here, I don't believe. 
When you go to take that off, you're going to want to put a backup wrench on so you aren't, you aren't as you're tor tightening this down, you can uh, tweak it. You don't want to be tweaking. You don't want to be tweaking all that pressure from tightening that brass nut. So you want to put a backup like a crescent wrench on here when you're tightening this and also when you're loosening it. Okay. So when you go to drain it, this is basically what you're going to do. You're going to pull this uh, cap off and the oil will come out side right here. And like I said, it takes a little more time than with just the regular drain plug. But uh, So again, 20, I wouldn't go over 20 foot pounds on this right here on the brass one. And we're going to torque this here down. And when you torque it down, put something on here to back up that brass so that you aren't putting more torque into that brass one. Okay, but we want to get it snug. I don't have it there yet, but uh, you know, get it up there. It's it's pipe threads. I got pipe dope on it, and it's tapered pipe threads. So get it up there, you know, pretty snug, and uh, then we'll be done with that. And then your holes, your return holes, from the bypass system will hook up right here. Okay, I'm going to tighten this up. And what I did is I snugged up this brass onto that fitting because I don't want to put a crescent on here and mess up these threads over here. So what I'm going to use is the uh, box end of this. I can and uh, do my turn and I got that nut backed up I think I can get one turn out of it here so it's good and snug <clears throat> almost there So, there we go. Now, to tighten it up, we're going to put a back up on the uh, T. We're going to crank that down fairly snug. There we go. There, we're done with that and ready to go. Now, another thing is uh, these holes right here are already existing in the frame. And this is my, uh, my shield for that for that uh, drain and, and these fittings here. Okay, so we're gonna use those holes right here to hold this up. And the way I do that, and that's another thing, is this metal here is, it's not terribly thick. I'm gonna say it's maybe an eighth inch. But what I do is I come in with an impact, get it on there nice and straight, and it'll thread right in. It's a 7 16 bolt, it'll be part of my kit. There, we just made the threads on it. So, we'll do the same on the other one. I think I'm going to get some earplugs for that. But that's how we get those bolts in right there. And like I said, when you go to tighten them up, they don't have to be terribly, terribly tight. You know, get a little bit of, a little bit of uh, torque on them. Put this bolt in here. Okay, and we can tighten that up. Okay, and when you go to change oil, you're going to take the bolt out of this side and you can rotate this down just like this. So it makes it easy to get access to all this to, to be able to drain it. And when you're done, take it back up. Snug up both bolts. There you go. So that takes care of that. Okay, we're going to be mounting this uh, bracket up for the uh, filter head. And we're going to be using these two holes right here, the oval one and then there's a slotted one. And in my kit I've got a grade 8 uh, carriage bolt and that's going to set right in here just like that. And then uh, you're going to want you're going to want a 916 socket with an extension, probably a 3 or 4 inch extension. And that will go in from the outside of the frame and there's a hole where you can stick that right on through. And then we've got our uh, 3 8 uh, grade 8 bolt and a uh, heavy thick fender washer. 
and that's going to go inside of the frame just like that and then I can put the uh, socket on there and hold it in place so it doesn't fall off and there's a spacer that goes in there as well okay so there we go and there that sits I'm going to hold that that bolt in place with that uh, 3 8 drive extension and now we're going to bring this up and we're going to line up these holes and hopefully I can do that without knocking that one out I almost needs three hands for this and there it is okay pull that baby right on through there again there that is okay I'm gonna see if that'll sit I think it'll sit there I can take out this extension and now I can take that quarter inch bolt or nut I should say it's a flange nut and we're gonna get that started on there we're gonna tighten it up by hand Go. Okay. And now I can take that extension again and get this bolt back in all the way. And there'll be a 3/8 flange nut if I can get my hands on it here. Where are you at? There it is. Okay. So a 3 8 flange nut will go on that inside right there. Okay, we're torquing these bolts and I'm putting uh, 450 inch pounds on this uh, 3 8 bolt. Okay, and on the other bolt, I'm going to back that off and uh, we're going to bring that down to, I'm going to say about 150 inch pounds on a quarter inch. Okay, and there it is. Okay, the other thing, if you want to put some Loctite thread locker on those bolts, you sure could, it isn't going to hurt anything. Okay, this Mishimoto adapter goes on right here, and there's actually two places you can take uh, oil sample from. We can set it up with a valve that's from my kit right here and we got the second port here we can take oil pressure from from right here and run it over to the filter head and uh, what we can do is we can have it so we can take a, a sample you know right down here um, or if you don't want it there what we can do is put that oil sample valve on the filter head and it's kind of a matter of where you want it to be more convenient for you um, there's a T that comes with the uh, AMZO BMK21 kit and uh, so you can put this valve and have it right here if you want and take your sample right here so either or you can put it here or you can put it up there on the, on the adapter so whichever one you prefer whichever is easier for you to get to um, if you're not going to put it on this adapter or uh, on the filter head I should say then uh, you won't need that brass T and what you'll do there is just put in two of these uh, straight fittings here that go to the hose so if you're going to put the, uh, the sample valve up here just set it up like this right here on the filter head okay I've got those three green bolts from my uh, my bracket kit and we'll use that to, uh, to go through that quarter inch uh, steel and then the lock nuts that come with the Amazon BMK21, we'll use those on the back side. And uh, what we're going to do there is get those nuts on, and then we'll torque them down. Those are uh, probably about 20 foot pounds on those. Okay, I'm going to show you what this looks like with three different filters on. This is the shortest one right here, it's an EABP90. So there's about what that's going to look like. Got plenty of room to get it in and out. Okay, the next one is the EABP 100. Let's slip that one on there and see what we got. There we go. There you go. And 
There is room for the longest one if you want to use that. When you go to put it on, you, this here is a coolant line for that uh, fuel coolant pump. And we're going to bring that. You've got to kind of slide it in just like that. And then you can get her started. Okay. There it goes. Okay, so there's the longest one. And we got room there. It's got a hose protector on there. I don't think we have to worry much about abrasion because there's really not much for vibration from the frame to this right here. So, but that's the longest one. That's the ABP 110. Okay, this is the bracket that comes with my kit. It's a line support bracket. And it goes right on here on the bolt right here in this cross member. And I've got a, a nut that also comes in my kit. And uh, just start that on there. And we want it basically just sitting about like that right there when we're done. So let's tighten her up. Okay. Okay, the Amzo kit comes with some Loctite 545, and that's what we're going to use on these tapered pipe threads right here. So we'll twist that cap off. And... We'll put some of that uh, on there and that'll seal up those threads and also kind of help lock it in place as well. There we go. Okie dokie. Now that's ready to go in. And this is one of the fittings from the Amzo kit. And that goes in the center hole on that filter head. And that's the oil coming out going back to the engine. So that's oil that's already been through the filter. So, we're going to tighten that baby up, and again, it's tapered pipe threads, so we're going to get it good and snug, but again, it's going into aluminum, so we don't want to get too crazy. I'm going to say that's about good enough. Right there. Okay, so that's ready to go. I'm going to start figuring out the routing of this hose right here so that we can uh, get that into I got one end on it we're gonna route that over and it's gonna come down along the frame and it's gonna come get attached right here with a clamp and it's gonna come over to the to that T that's on the uh, on the oil pan so we're gonna get that all cut and routed next yeah, there's a hole in the frame right here and I've got a self-tapping screw here. This is going to be for one of the clamps for the hoses. And we're going to install that here. Okay, now we're going to take it back out. Okay, now we got our threads in. Come on, baby. Come on out. Okay, so we're going to have a clamp attached right there. If I can get that out, there we go. So this hose is going to get routed, kind of going to go up high so it's out of the way of the uh, of the filter because the filter is going to be right in here. And then we'll we'll bring it over and down to the uh, back to the uh, oil pan. So that's where we'll have a clamp right there. And this here bowl will be part of my kit as well. Okay, I've got a smaller clamp right here. It's got a smaller hole in. That's going to be for this line support bracket. And what we'll do is put put a quarter inch bolt through it. That'll be part of my kit as well. And the nut. And then we'll snug that up. Okay. And then this uh, bolt right here we'll put that in and when you put this line up here you want to have it up high enough you want to make kind of a, a little bit of a gooseneck on it so it gets up above this aluminum line so it doesn't rub it on anything and right there it's kind of out in the open and, and nothing's in its way so that kind of gives it a nice safe path and right on back to the uh, to the crankcase there to the oil pan 
So we're going to put this bolt in right here, that self-tapping screw, and then that'll be it for this. Okay, I've got actually three wrenches on here, and uh, I've got a backup on that T so that I'm not cranking on that so hard. But uh, if I turn the, uh, the end of this hose fitting here and tighten it, it's going to start twisting that hose. So I put a, a 9 16 wrench on that hex as well so that it don't decide to start twisting. And then I can go ahead and get that tightened up. Take another bite here. Okay. And I get them pretty snug. I don't want them to leak. It's a metal to metal fit on that taper, on that uh, GIC fitting. So if you do notice it's starting to seep a little bit, you may have to tighten it just a little bit. Okay, there we go. So here we're done with that. And I got that all fastened right up here in the frame. And we got clearance up here from the hoses. It's not going to be rubbing on anything, it's all clear there. So I'll tighten up this other end here, get that squared away, and it'll probably take three wrenches to do that as well. But that gives you some idea how to route that line back. Okay, we've got uh, all our hoses tight here, clamps on, so we're ready to put up this skid plate. And uh, we just put that up and uh, snug it up. So when you snug it up, you need an extension on your impact. Just so you don't get too crazy because that stuff's not terribly thick. It's only about an eighth inch thick. But that gives you the protection right there for that hose and, and that fitting and all that. Okay, I got my sample valve and that's going on the Mishimoto uh, sandwich adapter. And we're going to put some of that uh, Loctite on. It comes with the Amzo kit. And that will both seal the threads and also it's a anti or a Loctite, I should say. So it kind of locks it in place once it cures. Okay, so that one there is about done. Uh, I'll send a second one along. And I think I got enough on that one. Okay, so this goes on like so. And we're going to put that sample valve in right there. Okay. say probably about right there I'll do it because it's kind of sticking back on a slight angle we can always adjust it or tweak it just a little bit later okay and then and what I will do is put this in and then I can either put on a swivel swivel 45 or a swivel 90 to get it kicked out as far as what I need that's a half inch. <clears throat> Come on. <clears throat> okay. So, like I say, I, f I might have a 90 degree that I can put on there if I need a 90. But the biggest thing is if I put that 90 on real close here, I can't get by the filter because the filter is going to be filter is going to be sticking out a little ways here and this here will get me out beyond that so if I need a 90 I will get a 90 I'm going to see how that goes once we get it up there but that gets us uh, fittings on where we need them and uh, <clears throat> this one will kind of come out the side over here towards the driver's side and this here will be towards the bottom okay I've got a 90 degree elbow that will kick us out far enough to, uh, to get us beyond the edge of the filter you can kind of see there Okay, so we're going to back it up with a wrench there and tighten her down good and tight. Make sure I got this where I need it. It wants to turn just a little bit. I can no 
want to maybe sneak up there and change it a little bit if I have to, but I think I got it pretty close. I'm going to throw a cross wrench on there, I think, to hold that in place because it's wanting to turn on me. Okay, another three-handed thing. <laughs> All right. There we go. That's working. Okay, good and snug. All right. Now, we've got our, uh, our nut here that goes on. And the torque on this, they're telling me 20 to 30 foot-pounds of torque to hold that on. Okay, so we're going to put that up there. Get that started. Okay. And go figure. I put the uh, <laughs> I put that in the wrong angle. I need it pointing the other way. Okay. So I need that oil sample valve pointing this way. So I'm going to turn that a little bit. And grab my crescent here. See if I can get it. I don't know if that stuff's set up already or not, but I guess we'll find out. Nope, not yet. Okay. Let's see how that looks. See, that's pretty close. I'm going to want it pointing maybe out just a little more. Then we got the filter there, too. I think about right there is where I'm going to probably leave it. Just about right there. There we go. Okay, let's put that baby up and see what we got. Okay. We should be able to get our our valve open to take a sample of the bottle down here. Yeah, it should work just fine. Okay. Now, we're going to torque that down. And I've got this set. Uh, let me see. I'm going inch pounds here. So if I go, I'm going to start at about 20. So that'd be 240 inch pounds. I'm going to try that first and see how it feels. Okay, and right now it's resting up against that uh, that boss right up here, which I think is just fine. There's 20. I'm going to take it up to maybe 25 and try that. There we go. Okay, I don't think that's going to go anywhere. All right, now, next thing we're going to do is make our hose. Get a little oil running down from the drippy drip. We'll get that cleaned up. Okay, now, I'm going to put that cap on and tighten that lid. That's a half inch. Okay, it doesn't have to be tight, tight, just enough to hold her on snug. Make sure the valve's closed. That's good to go. Okay, so next thing is to make the hose, and that's going to go from here and just jump right over to there. And I got the hose made, I just need to mark it and get it cut. So. That. And I gotta grab another fitting. Find it. There it is. Okay. Yeah, I like that Mishimoto sandwich adapter. It looks nice on there. I really like that. Okay. Get my hose marked out here. Okay, so. I'm going to say that hose is going to be about right there. So, I need my slicer. OK. 
Okay. Now, I am going to put the hose end on and then we'll come back and get it all buttoned up. Okay, I got the PPE filter here. I'm gonna fill it up with as much oil as I can before I put it on. The other thing I'm gonna mention is that the PPE filter inside has a real strong magnet. In fact, when I set it on the table, it, it, uh, it'll hold that filter right in place. So I'm gonna fill it up. And I'm going to tip that filter. There's a little bit of dirty oil in there because I had it screwed onto that uh, filter so it wouldn't drip all over me when I was working under there. So, And I'm just going to, I'm going to fill it. I'm going to make it so that I can put it on an angle like this without the oil uh, dripping out. Okay. So I'm going to soak up that media. It just gives you a little bit quicker, uh, I should say less lag time when you start it up and, and getting oil pressure. I just spin the filter and get the media all soaked up good. And I'll fill it so that it just about wants to come out. And that's about where it's at right now. You can kind of see, I'll get the light on here. But you can see the oil inside there. We're getting that media nice and soaked up. There we go. Okay, that's about enough. So from here, we're going to go ahead and put it on. And uh, it'll be starting it up and, and checking for leaks. Okay, we're going to put that filter on. And the thing, again, I want to mention is you can stick with the stick, uh, the stock filter, the standard GM filter, um, if you want to. But uh, this has got a whole lot more filter capacity on this uh, PPE filter. <clears throat> and checking my fittings up here. Yeah, I got plenty of room between that fitting and that hose, so we're good there. And... Uh, Yeah, relocating that, uh, that pump there gives us a lot more room for that longer filter. Okay, so basically what we have, we have that Mishimoto on there. And that gives us a spot to take the oil sample. And then on the top side, we're providing pressurized oil over here to the bypass. That goes in the outside. And then the, the center hole on that filter head, that comes out. It kind of goosenecks up and it comes down right over here. comes back and pushes it right back into the crankcase. So we've got that guard right there for it, line support bracket, everything's good and solid. So from here we're going to start it up and uh, make sure i got my valve closed here and i got that thing on tight. My fittings are all tight, I've got those done. So we're ready to start it up and, uh, and see if we got any leaks. Okay, right here is the uh, antifreeze for that fuel coolant pump. And we lost, I'd say maybe a pint. Um, right here is the level, you can see where these arrows are right here. That's the normal level. Um, I'm going to fill it up to that level, and then after we drive it, um, we're going to uh, recheck it again because it may drop just a little bit. There may be some air bubbles down, you know, in the hoses somewhere. But uh, I'm going to use some of the antifreeze, uh, Amsoil antifreeze. It's a premix, so that's what we're going to be using on it. Okay, so right there it's full, and uh, that's where I'm going to leave it for right now until after we drive it. And then after you drive it a few miles, um, we're going to check that again and see where we're at. We may have to add just a little bit to it. So that, uh, that kind of takes care of, of the antifreeze for that uh, fuel coolant pump. Okay, so here we are running, and just wanted to do a once over on it to show you how everything looks. I got the ABP. 100 filter on and I uh, came straight out with two fittings out of the top there and there's the mount goes on the frame and uh, good and solid okay and our hoses go up get some light in here if I can 
We've got the Mishimoto uh, adapter, sandwich adapter to get us pressurized oil. Oil sample valve. Hoses are all nice and solid and routed. And uh, we got no leaks, that's always a good thing. There we go. Okay, we've had this running for maybe five minutes or so. Um, you can see our level. It's supposed to be right here at the bottom of the uh, arrow, so we're, we're right there. We haven't taken it out for a test drive yet, so after we do a test drive, we'll check that one more time. But it's looking good right now. And uh, again, with that EABP100 filter, I've got right at 14 quarts in, so it's, it's right there at about the full mark. I mean, perfect at 14 quarts. Uh, if you're going to use the EABP90, um, I've got another, I got a 21 Duramax that I got that same bypass on. And with the ABP90, we're running uh, 13 quarts. So if you run the 110, I'm guessing you're going to be up closer to probably 15 quarts or maybe a little over 15. So that kind of gives you some idea how much oil to need according to which filter you have. So again, this truck has about 8,000 miles on. Uh, he wanted the upgrade done. So uh, if any of you would like to get the gold plugs or... Uh, any of the uh, bracketry that I make, uh, just get a hold of me. I'd be happy to help you out. Well, thank you for watching my video.